Welcome back to the Jack Swarbrick Show. Mick Aoki is heading into his sixth year as Notre Dame's head baseball coach after leading the Irish to a third-place finish in the Tuft ACC last season and the program's first trip to the NCAA Regionals in nine seasons. Mick is known for developing players and has seen Major League Baseball draft 42 of his players at both Boston College and Notre Dame, including Pat Connaughton and Troy Mancini, who won the Brooks Robinson Award as the Baltimore Orioles Minor League Player of the Year at the end of 2015. The Irish return their entire infield this season, and that is a good thing since the team will play 19 games against teams ranked in the perfect game top 25 this season, including two home contests against number 5 LSU and three against number 11 Miami. We are excited to have Coach Aoki here today to talk about his Notre Dame baseball program and the exciting season that is about to begin. Mick, thanks for joining us. It's great to have you here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Coach, thanks for being here, man. It's yeah. fired up. Jeez, I'm surprised you were here, so it's been a pleasant <laughs> I know, surprise. Right? It's, seriously, yeah. he, he lets me hang around. I so. know. Baseball weather outside. It we, is. We can go out and play, play too, as Ernie <laughs> Banks would say. Uh, the season's right around the corner. We're assuming it doesn't start at home. So uh, what's, uh, what's on tap to get the season going? So uh, let's see, a week from tomorrow, we travel out to Santa Clara, California, and open up with the Broncos for a three-game set. So we play Friday the 19th, I think it is, and Saturday and Sunday, and then we'll fly back. But we're looking forward to it. We have one more weekend of practice, which will be critical for us, but we're, we're really looking forward to opening the year. You talk about that weekend of practice. Um, it's 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 always fascinating to me how the team here at Notre Dame prepares for the season. We're we're indoors, and it's very difficult, I think, to play maybe a full game. Talk about your preparation in this in this kind of cold weather period for your team. So uh, I've always maintained. I've always coached in the north, okay. uh, and where it's snowy and cold and and whatnot. Um, but it's I've always maintained that if you have a the facilities that can facilitate development for your players on a personal level. Um, and you have the wherewithal to be able to take trips and, and open up the season at the same time that everybody else in the country is opening up, that it's not that much of an issue. And I think Loftus allows for that. Our, our pitchers can long toss. I mean, they can throw the ball darn near 360 feet if they need to. Um, they've got to keep it under yeah. 75 or so feet high or, or what. I don't know but, how uh, that, that know, math yeah. is working. That's a frozen um, rope there. But, um, you know, those guys can do that. We can take ground balls. We can even um, – we've gotten pretty handy with a fungo, so we can replicate some fly balls and different things like that in there. And and then we do, do, a little, we do some scrimmaging in there so that we get the dynamic of that pitcher-hitter – confrontation and, and the pitchers have to be accountable for being able to field their position, controlling the running game, different things like that. So you make some, you have to use some imagination a little bit when somebody hits a ball. I think Kevin Biggio is a little upset that I've called <laughs> two of his balls outs and, and he thought maybe they, they may have left the yard, but they didn't leave the Loftus building. So, uh, you know, <laughs> so they were outs. <laughs> for, for those of you that might not know, the, the Loftus sports uh, facility is, is as a track that surrounds a, an indoor track that surrounds a football field. So coach is kind of describing how they, how they practice inside of that facility. I just wanted to kind of give the context there. Uh, behind that, so. you, you've left a lot of blood and sweat and <laughs> I was, skin. In I was going to say I'm, I'm quite familiar with the Loftus Sports yeah. Facility. Well, the uh, turf in there is brand new, no, it's right? Awesome. So it's it's great, and yeah. um, I think that part has been. They they redid the lighting a couple of years ago. It seems like every year they're upgrading that thing a little bit. So it, it, it's been great. It's a, and it it allows us. You know, we we like to tell our recruits sometimes, hey, it's always 75 and sunny in Loftus. So you know, there you I mean, go. we're is. okay. Coach, coming off, <clears throat> coming off a great year, returned to the NCAA tournament. Against, played against a very tough Illinois team in Champaign-Urbana. Uh, great performance in the ACC last year. What what are the key areas you've got to replace uh, coming off last season? Uh, I think from a personnel standpoint, the, the, probably the three biggest ones are Scott Kerrigan, Ryan Bull, and, and Robert Youngdahl. Um, but I, I think we're able to do that. I think that we've, you know uh, – kids are going to be able to step into some of those roles we get some kids who didn't play for us during the whole entire last half of the season coming back kid like Jake Johnson who played very little Peter Solomon on the mound who didn't play a whole heck of a lot for us going down the stretch so we feel like we'll be able to take care of that and, and fill in those gaps I think the key is now is just to just try to get better a little bit every day you know get better from last year get better as far as just within the scope of our own team on a daily basis, just get a little bit better every day and um, just take care of the input, and I think the output will take care of itself. You, um, This team had a lot of strengths. You got some great pitching from a number of guys. We'll talk about that in a minute. 
But 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 the defense, especially on the infield, seemed to me to be a signature of this squad. They they turned a remarkable amount of double plays, especially in clutch times in the game. Uh, would you agree that that's that's one of the strengths of this squad? Yeah, I think I think our infield defense is really good, I, and it, it extends to the to the catching position as well. Right. I think you know Liggy. I can probably think of three cases where him picking somebody off at second base or first base got us out of some really tight spots, and and you might argue were really kind of watershed moments in those in those games. But I think our ability to turn the double play, I think our ability to just take care of the baseball in the infield was really at a pretty elite level, and we get that whole group back. And the great thing about that group is that they're just constantly wanting to get better. Um, I'm not sure that you can hit them enough ground balls. They <laughs> They take pride in it. I think they know that they're pretty darn good at it, and they love working at it. And so you've got, I think you've got a pretty good recipe. And so um, I would expect that they'll play it at a pretty high level again this year. You, know? you, you mentioned Ryan. Take us through the rest of that infield. So you've got Zach Katsoulis uh, at first, which was really a big upgrade for us. I mean, he's a kid who had played some outfield for us, and he's an athletic kid, and I think he really solidified the first base position for us. Um, Kevin Biggio has improved greatly because the knock on him coming out of high school was that he couldn't play defense at, at, at a high enough level. And, and I think Kevin has become a, a superb defender. I mean, you know, won the Rawlings Gold Glove last year at second base. Lane Richards, who has, I think he just personifies steady. I mean, he just, um, he can make some great plays. He's blessed with a, a, a huge arm, um, but he's just as steady as can be. And then Kyle Fiala at third base is a really athletic kid. Can high school shortstop, gone over to third base, and, and, and is, is a really, really good defender there. You talk about you know, getting better each and every day, and, and maybe for the common fan that doesn't, that doesn't understand the nuances of baseball, um, you know, maybe they look to a movie like Moneyball to understand really the, 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 the subtleties that, that lead to victories in your, in your profession. Can you kind of take us through maybe some things that you look at um, in the preparation, in, in building a team to really to know how you're, how you're going to be and, and what you really want to develop? So are there certain metrics you're looking for? Um, is there certain things that, you, that each guy is, lo is looking to do and get better uh, in your mind? I'm just kind of curious from a, from a common fan's perspective. Well, I, we chart on certain things. You know, we kind of key on certain things, the things that we really try to focus on things that we can control, right? So instead of really overly focusing on batting average, we focus on something that we refer to as quality at bats, right? So that would be barrel contact, that would be productive outs, like a runner on third base with less than two outs, and you just hit a ground ball to the shortstop to, to score them, right? right. Um, it could be things like just executing situational baseball bunts and like that runner at third base thing I just described, bad, uh, base on balls, getting hit by pitches, extent anything that's an eight pitcher above at bat, taking account from 0-2 to 3-2 um, type of stuff. So that things that we can control, we're constantly looking at. On the pitching end, we talk about quality pitches. And a quality pitch is essentially, did you execute the pitch right. that you intended to execute, right? regardless of outcome? You could get hit nine miles, but if you executed the pitch that you wanted to execute. Hopefully it does uh, Hopefully not, <laughs> right, right. And, and if it did, then we have to obviously have a conversation with Chuck. But, um, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's all his fault. Right. Uh, yeah. But nonetheless, if you executed what you wanted to, once it leaves your hand, you don't have any control over that pitch anymore. You so, know? so then in recruiting, you, you know, you talk about quality pitches, quality at bats. How, how exactly do you do, do, you do that when, when the things that are quantified are normally batting average, slugging percentage, you know, RBIs? How do you look for – um, you know, the kids that really play that type of baseball? Yeah, I think with the recruiting piece, you always, you, you have to sort of come down to tools to a little bit, right? So you go down and you look at those tools. But I also think the other part that you, you pay a lot of attention to is just the way in which they play the game. There's so much failure in our game mm -hmm. that if they're not playing as though they really enjoy it, when that failure gets ramped up when they come here and, and fielders are a little bit more proficient at turning batted balls into outs, they're going to be miserable in this thing, you know? Um, so... Do they play with energy? Are they good teammates? You know, are they into, are they into their teammates and successes and, and things like that? So you try to do as much as you can. When you get them on campus, you try to spend as many as much time with them as you can. You we quiz our kids about how they were or, or different things like that. Get a sense of it. Get a sense of the family because oftentimes you know you're 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 recruiting not just the kid but the family as well. Um, and then, but I think a lot of it comes down to this is the culture that we're hoping to build and sustain in our locker room. So 
the kid comes in, he has to, you know, he has to kind of get up into that culture and understand that, you know, the, that the I kind of has to go toward we. Given the, um, the, 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 so many of the veterans you have back and the quality of the ball we play, tough for freshmen to come in and make an impact. But who are some of the freshmen we might see this year contributing to the, to the team? Uh, I think Matt Veerling will, will certainly be a guy that, that plays a big role for us at some level or another, either in the outfield or on the mound or, or both. Um, I think Jack Connolly is another kid that will, will impact us some there. Connor Hawk, I think, has an opportunity to impact us some there. And I, I, and I feel really good about our infielders that we have in, sort of in waiting, if you will, a Cole Daly, Nick Podkull, um, Jake Singer. I think we've got some good players there. So looking forward to seeing why they develop. You, like you said, there's, you know, someone would have to get an injury or something would have to happen probably. But, um, you know, Cole Daly, I thought, played really well in the fall. And I think Matty Veerling is probably the one that's going to help us most quickly. Mick, we got to let you go in a second here, but I don't want to do that without uh, uh, giving you an opportunity to mention the uh, ALS fundraising effort that I know is so near and dear to you, and uh, it's coming up again uh, this year in association, I think, with Blue Gold Weekend, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is, and, and we're excited about that, and we're excited about having some people come out and raising the awareness of ALS and trying to help Pete Frades and, and the struggle that he's having um, from a physical standpoint as the as the disease disease sort of progresses in him but yeah you know, he's just he's such a he's such an inspiration to me you know you we talk about adversity and we talk about like the strong of heart type of that whole series and I don't know that anybody embodies it any more than he does you know he gets basically a death sentence almost what three years ago now I think and um, he's battled it and he's made the most of it and I think that it's probably fair to say that he's done more to advance the cause to try to find a cure of ALS than maybe any single human being on the planet. And uh, just proud to be associated with them and anything that we can do to help them, I'm really excited about doing. Well, thanks for, thanks for all you do. We're proud of you for being so committed to Pete and, and that cause and anything we can do to help. We're looking forward to it. Have a great season. Thank you. Uh, we're looking forward to another great one for Irish baseball. Well, thanks very much. Thanks for having me. Good to thanks, see you, man. Joe. Good to see you, man. All right. We'll be back in a minute.